Hey guys, welcome back to the Learn to Be Indie channel. Today I'm bringing you yet another tutorial. This one's a little bit of a beginner one and a little bit of a more advanced tutorial on how to make multiple menus in one scene in Unity. Before we get into anything very big, I just want to thank all of my new subscribers that have subscribed over the last few months that I've been offline, and all my current subscribers who have actually stayed with me during this time, and my viewers who keep coming back. I realize that it's been a bit of an absence since I've been uh, making tutorials, and I just wanted to let you guys know that was due to mostly a work thing, but you know, sometimes real life gets in the way. You can't really do much about that. So I did have all the intentions of getting back on these tutorials as soon as I could, but obviously I wasn't able to work on my projects during this time while I was working. So either way, we're going to be learning how to make uh, multiple menu panels that are going to exist in one scene in Unity. Now, there's very many ways that you can do this. One of the main things we're going to be doing is using enums, and we're also going to be using the game objects set active variable, which is going to allow us to make different menu panels all in this single scene, which we can then flip between at the press of a button. To start off, you're going to be able to see that we're using the exact same scene that we set up in our initial title animation menu, and now we have also our button functionality exists in this menu from my buttons tutorial. If you want to take a look at that, check out the annotation here and we will get started here. Now what you can see right here is basically we've got in our hierarchy we've got the canvas and our start button. Now the way we want to start this is we want to create a empty game object that's going to hold our menu panels and we're going to do this for both the main menu and the options menu that I'm going to show you. So basically what this will allow us to do is uh, flip between the menu panels as opposed to changing the buttons themselves and this will help condense our code a little bit. So to do this we're just going to create an empty panel for the main scene here or an empty game object. We're going to call this main menu. Now you want to make sure this is the parent or the start button is a child of the main menu empty game object. And that's pretty much what we want to do to start it off. Now we need an options button. Because we already have a start game button, we're going to need a panel or a button to get into the options menu. So to do this easily, we're just going to duplicate the start button here and position it where we want it relative to our start button and then we're going to name this Options button. We are also going to want to change the text so that it reads Options as opposed to having two Start Game buttons. Once we do this, you don't really have to do a whole lot. You don't have to make this a prefab, but what I like to do is make it a prefab. That way, if I ever need it, say for a uh, pause menu or something, I have something that's a little bit already set up for me and they keep the distance between the buttons, you know, accurate. So, to make the options menu, we're essentially going to duplicate this prefab just like we did with the start button, but we're going to name this one options menu. Now you'll see we have a start button and an options button in this options menu because we just duplicated it. And if I turn off the options menu, we only have, or sorry, if I turn off the main menu, we only have the options menu active. So we're going to change this so that we have a windowed mode button, change the text as well. And this we can add functionality to later, say if the player wants to change screen resolution. And for the options button, we're going to change this to essentially a back button to get you back to the main menu once you're done setting up all the options. So switch that to main menu, and we'll call this back button. And once again, we're going to drag this over into our project to make it a prefab. And now both of these items are prefabs. So you'll see when I select the main menu, turn the options menu off, and the main menu on, we have our main menu, which is Start Game and the Options button. And when I do the opposite of that, it'll go back to essentially the Options menu. The very first thing we're going to do script-wise is we want to put some more functionality into these extra buttons that we've just made. 
So much like my original button tutorial, we're going to make a function for when the options button is pressed. So we go public void, I'm going to call this on options. And for right now, this is just going to log you pressed options. And for later, we're going to change the menu states. Now I'll get, what a, get into what a menu state is a little bit later when we expand on what enums are, but for right now we're just going to leave this blank because we don't really need to worry about it. So I'm going to create another couple of uh, button functions here, one for the windowed mode. And this again will be expanded on at a later time, but right now we're just going to make it so when we click it, it shows that the user, the player, wants to enter windowed mode. So we're going to change screen resolution to at a later time. And lastly, we're going to make a back button function, which is essentially solely to control the menu state to bring it back to the main menu. So we're going to call this public void on main menu. just to make sure the button works. You don't have to do this every single time, but I just like to do it just because I like to ensure that I have button functionality. And we're going to change the menu state to go back to main. Once we have all of our functionality and our scripts for our buttons here, we're going to want to uh, go back to the main Unity menu and we're going to want to enable our new buttons that we've created. So they're all using their appropriate scripting uh, functions because you can see because they're all duplicates they're all using on start game which is not what we want so for the options button we're gonna click this go down to the on click go to menu script and then we're gonna click on options going down to the options menu we're gonna do the exact same things this should be a pretty similar process go to menu script on windowed mode and then for the back button we're gonna go menu script on main menu now that we have this what we're gonna to want to do is set up our menu states and this is what we're gonna be using to do it which is an enum so just to put there's menu states there we're gonna make a public enum and call it menu states and the menu states enum is going to hold the main menu and the options menu. Then what we want to do is make a current state variable which our update function is going to constantly check to make sure we're showing the right buttons for the right menu. So we write public menu states as we've already called this one and then we're going to name this current state. Next what we want is an awake function to ensure that every time the main menu starts and every time the main script starts in our menu that the current state is always main menu. To do this we're just going to write current state and set it equal to menu states dot main. So every time the first script starts, this will be showing the buttons for the main menu, always. It's never going to show the options menu when you load into the game, um, and that's just, you know, the way you want to have it, obviously. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to make our update function, which is going to be called every frame. And in here, we're going to want to put a switch statement, which is much, uh, very much the same as like an if-else statement, but it's good for checking a variety of cases. Granted, you could get away with an if-else statement because we only have two different main menus. We have a main and an options menu. But just to show you something a little bit new, we're going to go for a switch. So to do this, you write switch, input what you want it to check, which is current state, and then we have to set up cases. So to do this, we're going to set up case menu states dot main. So every time this is showing, every time the current state is the main menu, or is the main menu state, we're going to set actives and set the uh, game objects so that 
the main menu buttons are showing. We don't need to worry about this right now, we're just setting up our switch statement. So then we're going to do one for the options menu, which is just case menu states dot options. And then we're going to set active game objects for the options menu. And we'll break here. And you always want to include this break. That essentially ends your case. So if you don't have this, you're going to run into issues right away. So now that we've done this, what we want to do is get those menu panel prefabs that we've already created set up as game objects. We want them to be shown so that we can, we can set them up as variables in our script to set their actives. To do this, we just want to make a public game object for our main menu panel, and then another public game object for our options panel. Options panel. So once we do this and we go to our menu script, you're going to see we have the main menu and the options menu game object. They have nothing in them just yet, but we're going to drag our panels into the appropriate slots here. So the main menu is going to go in our main menu variable and our options menu to the options menu variable. This way we can set their actives in the script. Now that we have that done, we can go back to our switch statement so that when the current states are in the main menu that they show the appropriate buttons for that menu. So to do this quickly, setting actives is incredibly simple. All we want to do is type main menu, set active, and we're going to set this to true because we want it to be active and showing the buttons. At the same time, we also do not want the options menu active, so we're going to do options menu, set active, false. And that'll take care of this portion, and we'll go down to the options menu, and we're going to do the reverse in the options menu here. Very simply, we're going to type options menu dot set active, set it to true, and the next line down we're going to go main menu, set active, false. So that should wrap up pretty much everything you need in your switch statement. And this is covering basically all the coding right away. So you can see we didn't even add that much to the code here, but this is going to allow us to get a little bit work, more workability out of our menus without having them be so uh, resource heavy by having them in multiple scenes. So now that we go back here, all we need to do is go back and make sure that when we click the options menu they change to the right states. So much like we did changing the current state in the awake function so that it was always main menu, when the user hits options we want to go current state equals menu states dot options. And on the back button when the user wants to get back to the main menu we want to set current state is equal to menu states dot main. So now that we have both of these functions set up, we should be able to flip between the menus absolutely no problem. So we'll go back into our scene, hit play, and you can see I hit start game, I've hit options, and it flipped over our options menu. Now we're seeing our options buttons instead. Now we hit the windowed mode button, that's working. Go back to main, it sets the options, or it deactivates the options menu. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, tutorial showing you how to get a little bit more functionality out of your menus. Um, I really enjoyed actually making this tutorial. I know this is a little bit longer than what I'm used to doing, but uh, if you did enjoy the tutorial and if you did sit through it this whole time, I appreciate it. Uh, I'd really appreciate it if you liked my video, if you subscribed, and as always, thanks for watching guys.